Good morning, everybody. Today is Thursday. I'm hoping you guys had a great week so far. There's only two days left in the work week, so that's something to celebrate today. Um, over the past week or two, I've had a few questions about females, um, you know, how to tell if they're ovulating. Uh, we were talking about it in our Patreon group a little bit um, because one female um, for one of our Patreon members was... You know, they're do, typically when they after they have their pre lay shed, it's a I usually say it's about 30 days from the time they pre lay shed to when they should be laying their eggs. That's not a firm date because they can I've had them lay up to a week early and I've had them lay up to a week late. Um, and they can go over a week late. I, I've never seen one go more than a week early. Um, I would assume if they do lay them more than a week early, the eggs are probably going to be bad. I can't imagine they're fully formed. But, I mean, they, people have said they've had them 30 days late before. That's not very typical. Um, the odds of those eggs being good might not be as high as if they're coming out around 30 days. Um, there's a good chance the snake could be egg-bound if they're taking that long. Um, I've never personally had that happen, so I actually have like zero experience with them coming that late. I've, like I said, I've had them maybe be about a week late or so. Uh, so I can't really attest to the whole you know thirty day thing, but it's not very common. Um, I talked a little bit in a video from last week about you know signs that your snake is uh, actually gravid, which means pregnant basically. But I wanted to show some of these females. Because I have about four or five right now that are gravid, or about to lay eggs, or um, are ready to ovulate. So this is the first one here. She's due... Oops, sorry, honey. She's due any, na any day now to lay these eggs. As you can see, her pre-lay shed was 326. Today is 425. Her back, two-thirds of her body, as you can see, are absolutely humongous. She is hugging the heat. Uh, she's not tightly coiled anymore because she is, uh, you know, ready to lay eggs here any day. And this is the typical behavior that you see in the shape and the size when they're, uh, you know, ready to lay eggs. I don't usually see these females moving around a whole lot after their pre-lay shed. They're usually tucked back into the heat. They're usually tightly coiled up, and they're usually just waiting to lay their eggs there. You know, every once in a while you'll see them kind of come up here and get a sip of water, but you know, usually I don't catch them do that because it's not very often they're doing that. They're usually just sitting here on the heat. And the female that's about four days behind her is up here, which is my ultra male girl. And as you can see, she is coiled up. This is just, you know, kind of showing you that when you have these females, after they have their pre-lay sheds, this is their their, <laughs> this is their living space. This is their bed. This is what they do. They do not move. So if you're having a feet, if you think you had a pre-lay shed, if you don't have an ultrasound, if you're kind of new to this and you think your female might be gravid, this is, you know, if you're open that tub two or three times a day, this is what they should be doing most of the time. If you're, you know, watching those 30 days after what you think is a pre-lay shed, and they're not doing this the majority of the time that you're opening that tub, or or at close to this. That doesn't need to be at this tight of a coil, but it needs to be very similar to this. If they're not doing this the majority of the time that you're opening that tub, they're probably not grabbing. It's just, you know, not very likely. Um, let's see, we have two more up here. This one had her pre-lay shed already. You know, she's not as in tight of a ball, but I know this is a pre-lay shed because I was measure measuring her follicles. So, again, she's on the heat. She's in the back. That's what she's doing. That's my lightning pied girl. And now my other lightning pied girl is right next door here. And she is getting ready to have her pre-lay shed. Um, somebody asked the other day, uh, how do you know they're ovulating? It's hard to tell in this one because she wasn't huge to begin with and she's actually kind of past the ovulation phase. Once they start going into the prelay shed, the swelling on the back side of their body uh, typically goes down. But you know, if her head's right here and this is her neck and this is kind of the middle of her back, typically right here, like where this saddle is, which is like the bottom 
third of her body, you'll start to see that it swells up huge, like sideways. It looks like they swallowed a like a Nerf football. That's how big they get. That only happens for a couple days, um, and the peak of it is like usually less than a day. But typically, the swelling is so big that it, it's usually there for a couple days. You can notice it. And then, you know, within a week after that, you start seeing them go in the shed, and that's when their prelay shed happens. So that's how you tell they're ovulating. Um, prior to ovulation, they're typically up here wrapped around the bowl. Now, I don't know if this other female, this clown pied female, yeah, she's not even at that stage anymore because she already did that. Um, she's getting, she's basically ovulating right now. She doesn't have a whole lot of, let me see, a whole lot of swelling going on. Let me see if I can move her neck here. Now she's not really swollen up yet. Let's see if I can get that out a little more. Now she doesn't have a whole ton of swelling yet, unless I missed it. I don't think I did. Um, but she is, she was looking bigger than normal. Because she hasn't eaten in a few weeks, and that's usually the other way you tell. Usually, my females don't eat for a few weeks up to a month um, before they ovulate. So, you know, usually they're empty by the time ovulation happens. Um, and they definitely usually do not have a fresh meal in their bodies at that point. So, you'll see that they get really swollen in the back third of their body, like right around here. And you know it's not food. So, obviously... That's when your ovulation occurs. And within, you know, a week or so after that, they have their prelay shed. And that's how you tell they're ovulating. Prior to ovulation, typically they are up here. <laughs> they're wrapped around very tightly around this bowl. Sometimes they'll be wrapped around and they'll be in the bowl to help them cool down because they're getting ready to ovulate. So, I mean, those are the kind of the stages of, you know, uh, Pregnancy, uh, you know, to, I guess to make it simpler for everybody, um, they bull wrap, which is where the first stage is when they're building follicles. So sometimes be in the bowl to help them cool off. After that, they start to ovulate, which is when their back third of their body gets extremely swollen. It's very noticeable. You can't miss it, especially if you catch it at like the peak of what the ovulation cycle is. About a week or so after ovulation, they have their prelay shed. And then while they're gravid, which means they're making the eggs and building the eggs basically pregnant, they are usually tucked up tight on top of the heat in a coil. And they sit there. They really do not move. And they're there for about 30 days, about a month or so. And then you should have eggs. So I'm hoping, you know, that, that this girl... Uh, let's see, where are you, honey? There she is. Is, you know, laying eggs here any day now. Let me actually see if this girl, she's not bull wrapping. She's about 24. I don't know if she's, yeah, you can't really tell if she's ovulating yet. She's a little swollen, but she's still, I don't think, far enough along um, to show that she's ovulating yet. So, I mean, that's it. I mean, it's it's not very... It's not very complicated. All I should, would say is that you guys probably, if you have questions about it, if you're in the midst of breeding and you have a lot of questions about um, all this stuff, there's a, probably a lot of extra supplemental content you can see throughout YouTube. I know I've been doing this long enough. I haven't been making videos every day, obviously, for the whole entire time I've been on YouTube. But I think I just got an email from some, somebody from like one of those third party tools that I just had my 900th upload or something on YouTube. So I have like almost a thousand uploads on YouTube. That's a ton of content. Sometimes the video titles will have something like, like this in it. Like this video title today will say, hey, you know, this is all about watching your females, uh, you know, ovulate. But not all of them do that. But I have a tons, tons and tons of content to kind of go back and look through. And there's a bunch of other people that have probably covered this stuff too. So while I want you guys to absolutely ask questions down below, um, you know, give me ideas for new topics or things you want to see, especially that I'm trying to do this every day now. Um, also just search through YouTube and look for other people's videos too, because there's tons and tons and tons of content on there. Um, 
probably with the answers you need. But, you know, if I can do it in real time for you, um, you know, give you the answers to the questions you have, the specific questions you have, I'm glad to do it. Um, so that's it. I'm hoping they lay so I can record that and show that to you tomorrow, which would be Friday. Um, those other eggs, I think we have about five, about a week left. I'm hoping by this time next week, that ultra milk clutch that could give me like eight gene ultra mills. Hopefully they're either hatched out or pipping so I can cut them at that point. I'm sure the cutting video will come earlier in the week. I would say probably around Tuesday-ish. Um, so that'll be early in the week. And then tomorrow, hopefully I'm showing you that we have a big clutch of eggs.